that will try and keep the energy levels high for the last day, uh, last session. Um, I'm excited to go last, but I'm also upset that I go last because then I don't get to start this tradition, which is, what's your favorite annotation? <laughs> Guys, come on. Uh, this is my favorite annotation. Um, it's a little uh, meteor doodle that Copernicus drew um, in, the, in the margin of his, uh, on the revolutions of heavenly bodies or whatever it is, in somewhere around 1543. Um, shows that I'm not the only one doodling in the margins. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this is me, um, my website. Uh, my name's Tom Critchlow. I am a strategy uh, consultant by day. Um, I work for myself, so I work with a lot of different kinds of companies. A lot of them are media companies. Um, and if anyone wants to talk about the role of uh, annotation in media and uh, editorial workflows in particular, uh, I would love to talk about that. That's not what I'm talking about today. Um, I'm also a blogger, um, and that's what I'm talking about a bit more today. Um, I have a now page on my website that lists a bit more of my varied interests and things that I have going on. If you guys aren't familiar with now pages, this is a great thing uh, uh, started by Derek Sievers, which will just uh, be a bit of a tradition. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about how I fell in love with annotations and how I use them in blogging or uh, network writing, as, a, as I like to call blogging, a more fancy term. People look down at me sometimes as a blogger. Um, hopefully no one in this room does that. So this is kind of um, the beginnings, which is just uh, uh, there's a great blog post by Austin Cleon called um, Reading with a Pencil, um, and this idea of um, reading texts closely um, and uh, your marginalia and so on, which I'm sure is not news to anyone in this room. Um, this kind of started me thinking about this whole idea quite a few years ago about uh, the role that marginalia plays in the web um, in particular and about how that's often missing um, in many ways. Um, all the way through to my own lived experience, this is a screenshot of a blog post um, in Google Docs form. So um, when I do my blogging, I often write the longer pieces as Google Docs and share them around to people I know, friends, friends of friends, people on Twitter that I meet. Um, the sparks kind of a healthy... Um, debate and conversation, um, uh, often corrections, um, in the margins. Um, and the, this uh, all kind of gets stripped away, right? When you, when you publish back to the web, um, all of this is basically just copy and pasting the text in the middle and publishing it into my CMS. Um, and and that, that was a shame. That felt like a waste, that these are really valuable things that people are adding. And not only are they valuable, but they're also um, attributed, right? So when, when, when I publish the final piece, I'm taking out credit and attribution for all these things. I try and attribute where I can, but um, it's nice to have people's faces and names and comments there. Um, that led all the way through to um, a little bit later on, uh, stumbling across the hypothesis tool um, and starting to use this on friends' blog posts where I felt like uh, a close reading was necessary. So this is a, a, a good friend of mine, uh, Toby Shoren, has a blog called Subpixel Space. And he wrote a, really, a, a blog post that I really loved, but that I disagreed with sections of. And so I went through and did a close reading and said, hey, I really like this bit. This is good. This is strong. Um, there's a section of the argument here that falls down for me. Um, and uh, you know, this is basically me using Hypothesis as a Google Docs kind of replacement um, of a way to say, hey, I want to come say something about the thing that you wrote. And that was a really great discussion. Um, and then that led me all the way through to uh, in the past six months, I've been writing a book. Um, I've been posting the chapters or chapter-like objects onto my blog, and so my blog posts have been getting a little longer. Um, and I wanted to start retaining this idea of marginalia and, and side notes. So this is um, the current kind of template that I use on my blog, which is longer form, um, inspired off a thing called Tufty CSS, if any of you are familiar, that just lets me add these, these side notes, but they're not interactive. Um, you know, you can see on mobile, they're collapsed by default, and they can open up. Um, but these are still just static things that I put into the publishing workflow, even though I've started to use these for some of the kind of attribution things. So that when a, a post starts as Google Docs, gets a comment that I really like, I will take that comment and copy and paste that into the margins. But it's still a clunky and a static, and it still lacks some of that, that core attribution. So that kind of led me to, um, what if I could use Hypothesis on my own site? Uh, what if I could use that as a, as a commenting layer? Is that a tool or a, um, a network that I can start to, to kind of accumulate around my writing of close reading? Um, especially you know, when, when I, I left a, these, this kind of Hypothesis close reading on a friend's blog, um, he naturally wanted to come back and do it to me. Um, so there was that kind of, how can I encourage that or motivate that? Um, and should I put Hypothesis on my blog natively? I tried that on and off um, over the years. Um, and there were some, Frustrations that I had in particular with using Hypothesis um, on my site, and so I wrote this post in February, I think it is, um, that kind of led me to here. Um, so uh, thanks for people that read it, and, and um, anyone, there's probably people in the room um, who left Hypothesis notes on this as well, so thank you for those people um, who are here. Um, and uh, you can you know, go and read this and explore it in more detail, but the crux of it was um, me, just as an as a average punter, um, not being a UX expert, not 
knowing the hypothesis roadmap or resources or, or priorities, but just looking at how this works for me um, and, and what I like and dislike. This is the hypothesis experience, um, particularly on mobile. So this is um, uh, things that you know, you're probably mostly familiar um, with. Um, this is the genius um, web annotation. Um, and particularly on mobile, there's a few things that I really like about this, in particular for, for UX purposes. Um, one of them is, um, if I can use this little pointer, you guys can see this. Yeah, so um, one is putting the annotation button, uh, uh, unlinking it from the selected text um, is actually a really nice feature on mobile because the, um, there are other things that pop up um, uh, when you select text, um, especially on, on uh, this is on Android, which I'm more familiar with. Um, so I really like the idea that this goes at the bottom of the page, it's kind of anchored. Um, it gives a nice, clear uh, user flow. Obviously, they only have one uh, annotate button. There's no highlight button uh, or notion in Genius, I don't think. Um, so that's something that I really like uh, about Genius. And the second thing is that this, this X button goes inside the window pane. Um, which is not really a big deal on desktop, but on mobile in particular. Um, if we go back to the previous slide, uh, this hypothesis uh, uh, button here, you can see that it's actually on top of my name, which is also the, the link to the home page of my site. And so closing the window often is also a link back to the home page of my site. Um, so that's a really uh, uh, frustrating experience on mobile. So putting the X inside the window just kind of neatly sidesteps that. So that was kind of one observation that I had um, and one thing that I liked. Um, and then this is the uh, Google Docs um, kind of uh, comment notion, so not necessarily annotation, but comment notion on mobile, um, which uh, actually many people are not familiar with because most of the commenting on Google Docs happens on desktop. Um, but there's a few things, again, that I really like here. Um, in particular, this idea that uh, comments don't appear from the side, they appear at the bottom. So there is a, a kind of a, a fixed height window that basically takes up half the screen on the bottom that then, if there are many comments, scrolls vertically. And the one thing that I really like about this is that um, you can see the text at the same time. So, so that's the thing that we kind of take for granted on desktop with Hypothesis, where you annotate the text and the, the, side, the slider comes in. But for the most part, you can still see what you're talking about uh, on mobile. Uh, that's not true. You can see this on Hypothesis kind of completely covers the, the screen. Pros and cons to, to all these options. I'm not saying any of them are perfect. But that was kind of the, the lay of the land um, that I mapped out. And in the process of writing that and the process of exploring Hypothesis a bit more closely um, for my blog, um, I settled on this, which is, um, forgive me, I'm not a developer. Uh, so this, I'm sure this can be written better. And I'm sure John, John um, I'm sure will cringe or, 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 or uh, hopefully just improve um, uh, the, the code that I have. But I, I now have this running on every blog page on my website. And what it does is this. So this is the, um, so you have a, uh, over here, this is the kind of default out of the box hypothesis experience on mobile. Um, and this is the kind of slightly cleaned up version. And there are two things to note. One is that um, I've hidden the window by default. So um, especially on mobile, it's a slightly less intrusive experience. It doesn't get in the way of the content um, if there are no annotations there already. Um, so it kind of gets out of the way a bit more. Um, but the, the annotations themselves are still highlighted in yellow. So you can still click those and expand the sidebar. Um, the button for the sidebar is pushed down. So this is the, um, I think this is the clean theme. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong, uh, John, or anyone else. Um, uh, but that just means that it's less likely to interfere with an on-page element, which is nice. Gets around some of those things a little bit. And then the background I turned to white just for a kind of aesthetic um, uh, personal um, preferences. Um, and this now runs on every page on my site. So feel free to go in and, and do this by default. We don't need the Chrome extension. Um, hopefully gives a, a slightly broader footprint to this. So people that don't know what hypothesis is and don't know what annotations are can still come to my site, see the yellow text, click it, and discover this whole workflow. It's not ideal, not perfect, but um, I'm starting to get to a point where I'm feeling like, oh, this is a thing that I can have on my site and leave on my site and, and might solve some of my, my issues. Um, this was kind of a, a slight side note, but one thing, one thing that I wanted to, to call out an observation is um, this is the, um, the LA Times, uh, and this was a kind of a pretty high profile usage of annotation in, in, on a news publication where um, they were uh, uh, using an annotation tool so that you, they didn't have to define cultural terms in the article. Um, we're doing this because we want the people who already understand those terms to feel like our target audience. Really great, feel good kind of usage of annotation and a really respectful uh, idea behind different audiences and different perspectives on the web. Um, and it uses Genius. Um, and I think this is instructive for a few reasons, especially where um, newsrooms and media organizations are entirely mobile first um, at this point, uh, almost mobile only um, to, to a certain degree. Um, and that there's no reason this couldn't have been hypothesis, except that I think the Genius experience looks a little nicer, um, except for this Powered by Genius thing, which is ridiculous. I don't know why they have that in there. Um, but that's by the by. Um, <clears throat> so uh, and I'm 
going pretty quickly, uh, just trying to fit everything in, sorry for the, uh, the, the ramble. Um, so the blog ecosystem, so, so there's another, there's a deeper idea here around why annotations are important and why I like them in the first place. Um, and I've had a, uh, several conversations over the past, past couple of days about the idea that uh, regular people um, and the social web already understands um, annotations relatively, relatively well. Um, this is a tweet, but is also essentially an annotation. Um, this is somebody taking a screenshot and highlighting a section of a web page and commenting on it, um, adding perspective or adding just some kind of reaction. Um, and that this is a very kind of well understood and comfortable medium for people. Um, this is not a the, this is not a edge case. This is not a power user feature. Um, this is something that I see in my Twitter feed all the time. Um, and so there's definitely appetite and demand for this kind of activity, which is interesting. Um, and some of the side channels I've had over the past couple of days or even this afternoon was around respecting the idea that actually um, incentives are important to, to um, adoption of a certain technology and that um, you know, uh, playing nicer with Twitter, whatever that means in the Twitter ecosystem, making it easier or, or, or uh, more frictionless to get in and out of the Twitter experience and hypothesis experience um, could be interesting for more adoption and more social awareness um, within the tool. Um, and that um, threading uh, as a kind of broader concept um, is a thing that is getting more and more traction. I think that um, you know, uh, but when Twitter's UI changed to kind of make threading, threaded tweets a more kind of natural um, embedded use case of the product, um, it became a thing that people's mental model fits well to. They understand the concept of linking multiple things together and, and publishing in that, in that way, in that workflow. Um, and that threading is now, uh, at least in, again in the small corner of the web that I hang out in, I'm starting to expand a little bit. This is a blog post that um, uh, Aaron Z. Lewis, um, who I don't actually know personally, but uh, I really like this blog post, which just lays out some of the different ways that threading is happening today um, across blogs and Twitter and some other areas. Um, in particular, looking at kind of some of the superpower users of threading and how they use it um, and, and so on. And I think this is really interesting because um, you could you know, uh, copy and pay, or, you know, uh, find and replace uh, threading with, with annotating uh, in, in, in this blog post relatively easily, and most things would still make sense or still be relevant and interesting. Um, this is, so Twitter is one area where I, f I see uh, quote unquote annotating um, already happening within my, my peer group, my social network. Um, Arena is another one. Um, hands up who's familiar with, with Arena. Anyone familiar with Arena? One, one person, I think, in the room. Um, so Arena is interesting and worth paying attention to. It's um, uh, where my peer group goes for knowledge creation and um, uh, connecting knowledge together. It's a, it's a, a a research platform is what they call itself. It's kind of a, a rudimentary social network. Um, it's a rudimentary bookmark tool, um, some combination of all of those things, but allows you to grab things from the web and to put them into uh, groups and categories to collaborate on those things. It has some notion of an annotation, of a, uh, um, a quote excerpt feature, so not an annotation tool per se, but um, uh, this is really interesting. Also because one of the reasons this is widely adopted is because they have a, a kind of a brand and a a uh, clear cultural position um, about the kinds of knowledge that they're interested in and so on. Um, and so they're not agnostic to those things, which I think is interesting and instructive in terms of building community and building adoption in various tools. Um, being a, a tinkerer and a blogger, um, I'm, I'm uh, relatively uncomfortable with Arena myself, partly because I feel like their business model is... is um, uh, built on a house of cards, and so uh, I, I don't believe they're gonna be around for a long time. Um, so I built my own wiki um, on my own website, um, which tells you a little bit about who I am. Um, and uh, as well as building a wiki, I also have a, a kind of an idiosyncratic perspective on blogging itself, and um, I wrote this blog post called Small B Blogging, about how I think about blogging and, and what blogging does to me. Um, and one of the things that is important out of all of this is building uh, close reading, um, building a, a, a smaller but more engaged network of interesting and interested people um, around the writing and the publishing that I do. Um, and this was kind of the, the uh, beginnings of where annotations uh, also was, was you know, bubbling in my head. I, I wrote this last year. Um, and you know, ever since then, I've been chipping away at this idea of how do I do small B blogging, which is about uh, building small networks, building uh, people that are, are, are going to closely read my work rather than trying to spread to the masses and get as many uh, clicks and page views as I can. Um, and there's a particular framework in there. So this is um, uh, a framework called Release, Reference, and Rework by uh, a blogger called Venkatesh Rao, who runs a, a blog called Ribbon Farm. Hands up, who knows Ribbon Farm? 
four people, great. Um, so that's a whole bunch of new Ribbon Farm uh, uh, readers, potentially. Um, he is a little bit off the deep end with some of his blogging, um, but I really love this framework in a blog post called The Calculus of Grit about basically how to know whether you're on the right track with building your own um, kind of cultural system and building your own network and building, uh, uh, you know, building up a body of writing over time. And his theory is all about uh, this 3-3-R three, three framework of release often, so publish regularly. Um, reference, so reference your own work. Go back and, and uh, when you say, when you have an idea, uh, you know, lead the trails back to the previous versions of that idea and the, 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 the thread um, in the chain. And then rework, so take it, don't be afraid to um, keep refining the ideas you have. Even once you hit publish, you can hit publish again, uh, or you can go back and edit a piece. And um, this idea in particular of referencing and reworking um, is a thing that strikes me that annotation and hypothesis is really great at. This idea of linking documents together, of uh, keeping documents alive after they've been published. Um, and so again, this idea of hypothesis and annotations is, is, is bubbling through. And then this is another um, great blog post that I read from a guy called Matthias, uh, who I don't know personally, again, um, but uh, I'm not going to read the whole quote, but he basically said, if we could make the conscious decision to find better ways to connect our personal sites and to enable more social interaction again, what we would end up with is not only a bunch of personal websites, but a whole interconnected personal website verse. Um, and this aligns very well with the kind of indie web uh, movement that many of you will be familiar with and comfortable with. Uh, but again, I see Hypothesis as being a potential tool in this personal website verse, this idea of linking these sites, the disparate sites together and ideas and people. Um, and so uh, I have Hypothesis on my site today. I, I, uh, any blog post has it by default with that code that I showed earlier. Um, I would love aspirationally to go one step further and actually remove Discuss from my site. So um, Discuss is a kind of a, a third party commenting system that any site can put in with a little bit of JavaScript. They have a really great UX but unfortunately uh, are a problematic business. Um, they stuff a whole bunch of tracking um, cookies into the JavaScript. Um, they also inject ads occasionally. This is an ad they injected on my website um, at one point, um, which I will leave you to, to understand whether that fits with my aesthetic or not. But, um, uh, and this was just last night. I, I just put Discuss into Twic Twitter and grabbed um, you know, a couple of just random, completely random tweets about Discuss. Just to, to emphasize the idea there was a pent up uh, a frustration with them. Um, they got acquired by an ad tech company um, one or two years ago, which, which I think is part of their demise, but there isn't really a good alternative. Um, and in particular, commenting is a, is a social contract of um, you need to be able to trust the commenting platform and recognize the commenting platform in order to use it. Um, so when I'm on somebody else's site, if they have a commenting platform that I don't look, don't recognize or understand, um, I'm far less likely to use it. And that's part of the value of Discuss is that everyone recognizes it and, and quote unquote trusts it, at least as far as I know how to use it, I know where my comments are gonna go, I have an account, et cetera. Um, and so, uh, you know, much as I would love commenting to be solved by a thousand different solutions, actually there is a value in having a uh, well-recognized and well-understood solution. Um, and so one of the experiments that I want to try next is actually getting rid of Discuss comments on my site and replacing that bottom of the page comments experience with uh, some kind of page notes from Hypothesis API call, um, which, which I haven't done yet, but, but have aspirations to at least experiment with and play with. Um, all this brings me to, so I stole this from uh, somebody's presentation, I forget. Their name, apologies, um, but but this was kind of the uh, from yesterday with the the uh, mental model of of um, how hypothesis kind of works and the different layers that are available, um, and uh, I'd love to propose a new layer um, somewhere in between the idea of a group and the general public. So we're talking about public comments, public annotations, but that still uh, there is still some value in having some kind of uh, light ownership um, or light oversight um, and management of uh, uh, hypothesis um, annotations. And today, um, I actually learned yesterday there is such a thing as a publisher group or a publisher level um, uh, that I didn't know about previously, um, which maybe solves some of the things that I'm about to talk about. But um, I would love for that to be available and for this to be a thing that bloggers can you know, sign up for or, or engage with to the point where I can say, I want to know when people are leaving annotations on my work. I want a way to um, uh, you know, maybe moderate them, uh, have some kind of experience around them, report on them, et cetera. Um, and uh, so in part of my quest um, an interest in doing this, um, one of the biggest pieces that is missing is a, an alert system. There's no way that, that I know of today to get an alert when somebody leaves an annotation on my site, so I built one. Um, so this code is, um, 
Again, I told you I'm not a developer. This code runs inside of a Google spreadsheet um, using a thing called Google Scripts, um, which is one of the coding platforms that I'm most familiar with, um, which I guess so says a little bit uh, about who I am. Um, and uh, basically, this, this relies on a single API call um, here to a, to a wildcard domain um, uh, search pulls back the latest annotations. If there are new annotations, then it sends you an email. Um, one of the great things about the way that this is built is that you can copy and paste this into your own Google spreadsheet and run, run your own version of this, and that it sends using your email address to yourself. So it doesn't, there's no third party. I, it does, by the time you copy and paste this code, it doesn't rely on me in any way, shape, or form. Um, also doesn't rely on any other mail server, uh, which requires management and costs and oversight and, or, or anything. So um, uh, this is a good kind of, I think, um, indie uh, small version uh, of what people might need. This is an example of what it looks like. So you can see that this is a Google spreadsheet um, uh, on the left um, uh, that shows just the list of annotations that it's fetched in recently. Um, and on the right is an email that I got yesterday um, from some uh, annotations on my site. Is, is XLDRKP here right now? No? Don't know who they are, but they left some uh, some annotations on my site, and we had a little back and forth. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, and, and so I have this set up now, um, which I feel like is starting to round out this um, you know using annotation as a as a layer as a blogger um, to both encourage them in the first place, and then monitor and get alerted for them on the back end. Um, it's starting to feel like kind of bit of a bit of an end to end workflow. Um, and I just wrote up uh, this morning, so it's not very detailed, but um, this blog post here has a link to uh, all of this code um, and everything. Um, the, the presentation has it as well, but the blog post is, is there for, for you. Um, and if you have any trouble setting it up or anything, then, then or don't know how to use Google Scripts, which are super easy to use. Honestly, anyone can use them. Um, uh, you just give me a shout, or send me a note, or, or grab me after um, here. Um, and uh, that's kind of it. Uh, uh, one last note. Just maybe the, especially given the the spider web uh, logo for for the conferences. Um, this is also one of my latest blog posts about a, a new mental model for blogging that I'm really excited to explore, and I haven't really explored it yet. But um, suffice to say, watch this space for blog punk. That's all I got. Now, oh, come on. Here we are at the end, the very end of our day. Any questions? Oh, yeah, lining up. He's already asked a bunch. You can go ahead first. <laughs> this is just for hypothesis, actually, but it's out of this. What will it take, technologically and or socially, for you to be the discuss box with the little H in the corner? Full stop. That's all I have. You can answer it tomorrow at the hack day. <laughs> so discuss is a growing nightmare, right? Um, you have page notes. That's so discuss with a Q, you mean, right? Yeah, that yeah. nasty thing. Discussion. And it, like, if you put a T on it, then it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just the box, hypothesis branded, makes a page note, and discussions happen over there. Otherwise, it looks just like, not just like. Oh, the H key is not working, sorry. There we go. Like Friday. Right. Yeah, exactly. All right. I could. Is that what you're saying? All right. <laughs> this is this is the um the discuss box right here for those that aren't familiar with it. Um it's just a uh this is just a piece of javascript that gets called in to to yeah. Why is my picture on there? Cuz it's logged in, I presume with It's <laughs> not my not, it's not, <laughs> not my not my computer. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Identity theft, Dan. <laughs> so, so the, the, the experiment that I want to have is um, uh, displaying the page notes from Hypothesis at the bottom of the page in a nice kind of format that looks something like this, but that I, I, I don't think my coding skills are good enough to have the little start the discussion box that will post a page note when you leave the, when you leave the comment. Uh, I don't have the skills for that, so, um, yeah. So, we think a lot about annotations as, you know, like marginal notes, but you talked a lot about um, annotations as links and building threads. One of the things that's difficult for me is um, uh, when you find something, you're like, oh yeah, I want to link this to this st other stuff that I wrote or this thing that somebody else wrote, is um, finding that other thing. Um, and then like, do you go 
say something back at that other side and link it back to the first one? Like, do you, do you have a conceptual workflow or is that just something that needs to be worked on or? Um, I mean, I have this wiki on my own site that I maintain um, with just uh, l like links of stuff and, and random notes, um, uh, which is a conceptual model that I have for, for grabbing things and putting them in containers. Mm -hmm. um, I actually don't think there is. A, it's one of the reasons I think that everyone uses um, to-do apps and goes through many of them is uh -huh. not because the to-do apps suck, but because everyone's mental model of to-dos uh, <laughs> right, right. Is, is different. And, and so they need to find a thing that matches their workflow. And I think it's the same for archiving information, creating knowledge, making notes. I think everyone has a slightly different mental model for it. Um, yeah. what, one thing I did see, which, which maybe is interesting, is um, there has been research done totally blanking on the, the name I can send you after, but um, I, think it came out, I think it came out of MIT, but it was about how people use digital tools to store and remember things, so collecting and, and archiving things, and that files and folders is the best way to do it. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've heard the same. Yeah, yeah, better than tags. So people think right. the tags are good, but when you actually put it to test and sit people down and ask them to remember something or find something they previously have, have left, um, yeah. that files and folders outperforms. Um, and so don't be. that's why my wiki is, uh, quote unquote, files and folders. Um, these are the folders, these are the files. Um, uh, because it allows me to, I can just about remember this number of folders in my head. Um, <laughs> but the a tagging structure becomes unruly. It's far harder to memorize. And every time I see this, I'm reinforcing in my brain what this list is. Whereas that's not, also not true for tagging um, in many ways. So um, anyway, this is one observation maybe that, that um, don't be afraid to use files and folders yeah. for collecting cool. things. Thank you. Yeah. I am that person who has a comment rather than a question. Great. Um, if you go back to your blog post uh, where you talk about experimenting with annotation, um, Rob and I annotated it at almost exactly the same time um, where we point to um, a way to have an icon to indicate that a page can be annotated and there are annotations on it. Um, and the one that, the example that I showed is actually not hypothesis branded, um, although it would be cool if people felt inclined to do that. Um, and then the other thing was... I'm not sure why it isn't showing the annotations on this page. I think it may be... Maybe because I'm uh, in like incognito or something? Like your most recent blog post? Yeah, but this one should... This one. There's annotations on that page. Yeah. Extension at the top. I think... On the other blog post, the integrating annotations. Yes. Oh, okay. This yes, one. that one. But I don't know why annotations are not showing up. Next to your browser bar, there's a little number, number four, maybe click if you click there and. That's but the JavaScript on my page should show these anyway. The annotation maybe that I working. made at least was toward the bottom. No. Yeah, I think I it's just not showing show for some it. reason. <laughs> Something weird is going on. <laughs> anyway. Uh... Oh. Oh wait. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Um, so I have a oh, screenshot cool. of how someone else has done it. It's just, it says annotations, <coughs> little bubble, and if you click on that, it opens the sidebar. Um, and it's not hypothesis branded at all. Um, and then Rob actually linked to a, a gist that shows how it could be done. Um, it's maybe. Is this web mention thing? No. No, no, no. We're back to the <laughs> further down. <laughs> no, Rob. Uh, sorry. No, no, scroll down that. that, that. Well, that yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one? No. Doing that. <laughs> oh, this one. There we go. <laughs> uh, so what does this do exactly? This is the... Uh, so it lets you Oh, this is the, the button widget. that opens the... Yeah. Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then the other thing is if you or anybody else wants a, a publisher group, which is that default layer where you would have uh, moderation privileges, and then you would also have um, an activity page where annotations would aggregate, uh, just email support at Hypothesis. That is me, and we'll get you set up. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. This, <clears throat> this might be the same question or comment. Uh, I was wondering, at one point in the working group, we had, or in discussions around the working group, we had talked about the notion that a person should be able to be the curator of their of annotations on their page, or not... Not necessarily the curator, but like you would have a view of annotations that things like ones that you've 
surfaced up from you should be able to be notified that there's been an annotation on your page and you should be able to surface up other ones to become like premier content that you like you mm -hmm, actually mm -hmm. incorporate them in and I don't know has that gone anywhere with hypothesis can you register could I register my blog with hypothesis a site that I own like like I can register for Google Analytics I can register my site and say I own this I put a little thing on there that proves that I own it and then go ahead the answer is that's exactly what we should do but we, we, we do. you're not on the mic <laughs> the answer is we should that's a thing we should totally do but it doesn't exist yet so there's no way for someone to say to someone to say I am to basically prove that they are the owner of a particular page and therefore um, I mean the line we've normally t recent usually taken is that if you own a page you should be able to control the default view that people see right. so for example like instead of the public layer showing up you might have um, you know you might have a different layer that's one you control that's typically we found the thing that publishers really care about is that it's okay to have the public layer there somehow or if you're logged in or for someone who's logged in to use their own private groups but what they really care about is like what's the thing that people see by default if they're logged out so um yeah let's okay. but i mean if people contact caitlin then we can set something up for uh, for sites on a, on a basis but then we obviously we have to establish by some other means that you own that site. Okay, great. Uh, sorry for not involving no, no. you in that conversation. I, I would only land a plus one and say yes. It's like a little. Uh, there's lots of other tools that work that way with a little meta tag or something that proves that I own it, and then that validation. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you.